Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and I wanted to go through everything that you might have missed at Unity's keynote from Unite 2024, all the key features of Unity 6, and everything that we're going to see with all the special dates, events, and everything. I will have another video on the roadmap because there's some epic things coming in the future of Unity. But Matt Bromberg is the new CEO at Unity, and he's trying his best to allude to the fact that they want Unity to get back to the core values of supporting game developers and with the removal of the runtime fee, charge even less, give you more tools, more optimization, more performance, and all the best ways to make the games you want to make. Its key takeaways is Unity 6 will officially launch on October the 17th, 2024, and this will come with updated guides and long-term support, which goes much further than the normal support cycles, and this will actually be over a two-year period, so they can be developing the next version of the engine alongside it so you're always up to date with the things that you need. And they do say that in 2023, 90% of games that were released on Steam uses a render pipeline like URP or HDRP. The built-in render pipeline will be disappearing at some time in the future. And then even 50% of mobile games and XI games were created in a render pipeline. There's new light baking architecture to make this even easier. There's adaptive pro volumes. There's lighting scenarios so you can blend between day and night much more easily. There's GPU resident draw for faster rendering when you have much large scalar scenes. And this goes hand in hand with GPU occlusion culling, which is an automatic reduction because before you would have to use Umbra's occlusion culling where you'd have to bake this. If you had objects behind something else which occluded it, you'd have to bake it and do some manual process. With GPU occlusion culling, it will do that automatically. There's spatial temporal anti-aliasing. It will give a GPU boost because you will upscale from a lower resolution to a higher resolution. You'll get higher quality, but you'll get more performance. And that can actually reduce your CPU and GPU performance by up to 50% if you've got all of these things going together. And last year, Unity did have their keynote talking about the Fantasy Kingdom that will launch alongside Unity 6 on the 17th of October. And you'll be able to get access it for non-commercial projects. So you'll be able to mess around, look at all the assets, how they've set up the lighting, and how they've done a big, massive scene. And this even runs on mobile devices with around 4,000 different trees. And it uses SpeedTree 10 with its brand new optimizations for its new interface, win system, and so many more features if you're somebody who does use the SpeedTree system. They did look at their new cinematic, which was Time Ghost. And it's using the unmodified Unity 6 engine running on an RTX 490. So it's fairly high end, but does run in real time. And I'll play this for you here and you can skip on and I'll put the annotations down below if you want to skip on to the next part.
So when you look at Time Ghost specifically, this has multiple animated characters. This has a really detailed environment, custom visual effects, six-way lighting, real-time shadows, millions and millions of blades of grass, all set in real time. And then they're going to talk about exactly how they achieved these effects. So they use the adaptive prod volumes inside the trench, as you can see here. And this allows you to capture more details and the way that adaptive probe volumes works compared to traditional volumes. Traditional volumes, you'd have to apply the probes yourself manually, but with adaptive probe volumes, it will you'll be able to set a bounding area and you'll be able to specify in say this trench area, I want more detail in there. And in the background over there, I don't need very much. So it can just be much less accurate. They have specific lighting scenarios to blend between different times of day. So you can get different dramatic lighting and even use the indirect lighting from baked illumination to be able to use that. They do have loads of trees and grass. They've got over 12 million instances of terrain meshes. They did use Houdini to scatter these. It does use ECS to create entities for each of the vegetation. So they can create much more optimized variations repeat those around and be able to optimize as they go along. And they did use their own AI model using Centus to be able to take what cloth animations that they would have had, which would be incredibly difficult to produce because they would be really heavy on the memory side because they'd be over one gigabyte in performance and reduce this down with the AI model to learn how these animations, the cloth simulations should be in real time and make it very manageable and good to use. And there is a full talk on this too. And this will also be playable and usable in Unity on October the 17th too. They did go on to get the developers that are creating Den of Wool, which actually uses a lot of Unity 6's graphical and rendering features. And they do enable GPU resident draw to reduce the draw core batches by around 45%. That enables them to use GPU occlusion culling to reduce the calculations that the CPU has to do, pass that to the GPU, and make optimizations there. They use STP or the spatial temporal anti-aliasing to be able to go from a low resolution to higher resolution, like I said. The biggest thing about Unity 6 is that all these features will be suitable across all pipelines and across all platforms too, so be able to take advantage in all devices. Unity 6 will offer full DirectX 12 support, so it includes bigger advancements for ray tracing for RTX GPUs, higher performance, higher quality shadows, and much better reflections. They do use the adaptive probe volumes, which can automatically be spaced around the world, and these are a brand new debugging feature along with other ones, which allow you to select various probes to be able to see which areas are contributing to lighting, to be able to look at how to best auth your lighting to avoid light leaking and other annoying, really artifactual things. And all of these were basically just little tick boxes that they could enable in Unity 6. And there's about 23% performance gain on just enabling these features alone without any big external optimization. Then they did go on to mentioning about multiplayer and there's a brand new multiplayer center and you'll be able to do some drop downs to say the size of the player base you want, the type of game you're trying to create, and it will give you recommendations on exactly which Unity features or which multiplayer sections and everything that you'll need to get yourself started. It will usually recommend Unity's netcode for entities, which will be additional packages, which will pop up and say, you need to install this and this to keep it nice and streamlined because often multiplayer development can be extremely time consuming. And it will even help you create a basic scene with basic network setups. And there's brand new packages and widgets will let you drag out, let's say, text chat, relay chat, lobbies, browsers, join codes, and everything. And you can just drag and drop these in from the create menu so you can get started much, much quicker. And in their example, they just drag text chat in from the create menu and they can easily create two game clients to make this work because Unity 6 has a brand new instance creation. So when you go into multiplayer play mode, you can create game modes side by side without ever leaving the editor and having to open up external applications and mess around. Let's say you wanted four players, it will play one in your editor and spin up three different examples alongside it just so that you can test around much faster, much more quickly, and you'll be able to download their demo Mega City Metro to explore these features. And they will have a brand new selection of a distributed authority and client-based systems, which allow you to have host migration. They talked about mobile monetization, which might be interesting to a lot of people. There's Unity Level Play, which has a lot of advanced real-time reporting, 
There's a lot of tooling in the editor though, which will be added, which will have a brand new updated interface. Then you will have options to use Unity Ads, Iron Source, and over 25 different ad networks to be able to compete to get the best ad revenue for you. And these will all have tools to fine tune and edit ad placement so you can choose between these different networks. And then over 90% of level play downloads came from indie developers or smaller teams that use these features. Unity did want to touch on the amount of platforms they wanted to reach and the newer platforms they want to make better. They have over 20 different platforms which will run with Unity 6. And there's brand new features for Unity Web and Unity knows 68% of gamers actually play on a smartphone. So with Unity Web, it allows you to reduce load time for mobile browsers by creating optimizations. And this allows you to embed your web game in a web view and then use an app template just like a native app to be able to put this on people's home screen. And this means people don't have to download a demo. It can be good for press builds and there's no need for anybody to actually go to a store to download it. They can do it exactly themselves and run it on the web, which will have much better performance. And there is a demo of some of the performance that you will see. And I'll leave the footage on in the background so you can see it because it's pretty highly detailed for something just running in a web browser and the web GPU backend will be available to be able to use, but I don't think it's in full release just yet. The final thing that was shown in the conference was what you can expect in Unity 6.1 and the future of Unity. And I think a lot of these features are something that people are really going to be interested about. So for 6.1, there'll be newer resolution formats for larger screens and foldable devices. There'll be deferred rendering plus, brand new build targets, and lots of different optimizations all for performance. And then if we look into the future, could it be Unity 7? Could it be further? Who knows? They're going to remove all the complicated pipelines. So there'll be no more built-in URP, HDRP. There'll be a unified pipeline. It'll integrate URP and HDR features all together so you don't have that mess anymore. Dots and ECS will become part of the game engine, the very heart of Unity, because they want to increase performance across the board. But game object-based design won't disappear it will actually allow you to have performance increases even when using game object based design. Unity are committed to reducing wait times, progress bars and all that good stuff by streaming things in the background so it'll only load things that are most important to your scenes and projects and everything else will be loaded in the background so you can get going much much faster. There'll be brand new world building tools that are based on the dots architecture so you can have virtual texturing, advanced tessellation, you can have a non-destructive workflow and new shader graph improvements so you can seamlessly blend different parts of your terrain together. This is very similar to Gaia and other popular terrain tools that are on the Unity Asset Store. There will be a brand new animation system which allows you to create animations in a brand new way with different graphs, more optimizations and all that good stuff. They're moving all the mono style behavior to core CLR so everybody's got the most up-to-date .NET features, all the best C-sharp features, and all the best performance. And they are committed to getting feedback from developers at this current time, next year when it goes into open beta. And there will be, as I said, a roadmap video that I'm creating to be able to show you exactly in detail all the things that you should see and come to expect. So let me know down in the comments of what you think of all these features, if you're going to be able to use them, and whether you're going to adopt Unity 6 yourself. So do be sure to check out all the links down below for all the best sales, savings, and everything you can find in game dev. Check out my Patreon too to get over 225 different scripts, assets, and projects you cannot find anywhere else. And a big thank you to all my patrons. Special thank you to Peter Steiner, Barry Shuther, and Jennifer for their amazing support. And thank you for everybody else for coming to watch the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.